Hi everyone and welcome to the next Orca lesson. Today we will be learning about mysterious and fascinating beaked whales. This is the second in a set of two lessons about these fascinating creatures. My name is Anna and I work for Orca. Orca are a whale and dolphin conservation charity who are dedicated to the protection of whales, dolphins and porpoises and their homes in waters around the UK and the rest of the world. Our vision is oceans alive with whales and dolphins. So we already know that beaked whales are part of the toothed whale family. They have a single blowhole. The males have teeth, but the females don't. But they are a whale as they have a small dorsal fin two thirds of the way along their back. We also know they are very mysterious and we don't know much about them. Here are a few examples of the species of beaked whale that we see in European waters, but as we know there are 23 species of elusive beaked whales worldwide. We also know that beaked whales are extremely deep diving. For example, the Cuvier's beaked whale here is the deepest diving marine mammal on the planet and can dive to 2,992 metres deep and they can hold their breath for over two and a half hours. If you want to learn more about their deep diving techniques and adaptations, see Orca Lessons 7 and 8. So the Cuvier's beaked whale, along with other species of beaked whale, are perfectly adapted to dive into the depths of the ocean. And they dive this deep to find their prey. They love to eat squid, and they're known to eat at least 47 different species of squid. They also occasionally eat deep sea fish and crustaceans. Beaked whales don't have a full set of teeth, and the teeth that they do have are not really very functional. The males just have tusks at the front of their beak, and females don't have any teeth or tusks. We know that this illustration here is a male too, as it has scarring on its back. Remember they use their teeth in territorial battles with other males and they get all this scarring all over their body. So if they don't have functional teeth, how do you think they feed? They're not a baleen whale, so they can't feed in the same way as, say, for example, a humpback whale. And they don't have a full set of teeth, like a bottlenose dolphin, so they can't grab their prey and swallow it whole. Instead, since they don't have teeth to grip their prey, beaked whales, like the Cuvier's beaked whale here, use a suction method to feed. They slurp and suck squid into their mouths. To do this, they have a throat groove. As they're feeding in a deep, dark ocean, they use echolocation, just like other toothed whales. So, in brief, high frequency sound waves are produced actually in an organ in their blowhole, in their nose, and they're focused through the melon, which is that bulbous forehead, and those sounds go out into the whale's surroundings. As these sound waves hit objects, they bounce back as echoes, giving the whale information about its prey and its environment. The Cuviers make long, deep dives searching for squid, both during the day and the night. As they dive so deep, it's very dark here, so their echolocation has to be very, very good. And as we've just mentioned, the way they feed is really strange. So let's talk more about these throat grooves. So beaked whales have two throat grooves either side of their face that allow them to stretch and expand their throat. And they have a really flexible tongue that can be retracted really quickly, creating a drop in pressure that would suck prey into their mouths, just like a hoover. So next time you're slurping up your pasta, you can pretend to be a beaked whale sucking up squid. So that's how beaked whales feed without functional teeth. Cuvier's beaked whales are the most widespread beaked whale species. They live in deep offshore waters in all oceans of the world, except for the Arctic and the Antarctic. In this map here, you can see where we have sighted Cuvier's beaked whales on orca surveys. Can you see the sightings, which are those little squares, are entirely in deep water. If we zoom into this part of the Bay of Biscay, which is a sea area that lies to the west of France and the north coast of Spain, there's a real hot spot of sightings here. We're lucky that the ferry we survey on 
passes over some deep sea canyons in this area, which are jam-packed full of squid. So we see lots of beaked whales here. Through our work in this sea area over the last 20 plus years, we know this is a real hot spot for beaked whales, especially for the Cuvier's beaked whales. So it's really important that their habitat is protected here so that we can protect these amazing animals for the future. We've also made some other fascinating discoveries through orca surveys. This creature here is the True's Beaked Whale. In 2018, we saw a pod of these elusive creatures from the decks of a Brittany Ferries ship. Those on board were so, so lucky to catch a glimpse of this incredible animal's life. The pictures that were taken on board by orca volunteers are said to be the best pictures ever taken of this species. Incredible! The animals, which are a rare species, have only been seen alive a handful of times. And this sighting is only the second confirmed sighting of the species in the Bay of Biscay. We were lucky that guests on the ship took over 700 pictures of this pod of animals as they passed on the ferry, suspecting that they were something quite rare. And some of these pictures managed to capture the distinctive protruding teeth at the front of the animal's beak, a characteristic of the true's beaked whales. Orca's team contacted a number of leading experts on beaked whales to confirm if it was true, if we had seen these amazing true's beaked whales. And after much examination, the sightings were verified as true's beaked whale. Not only was this a rare sighting, but an additional pair of teeth were seen in the pictures. This has never been seen in this species before. If you look really closely, you can see them on this picture. What an incredible set of pictures, which will help us learn more about this rare species. Now looking at this picture, you might think that this here was the mouth, but that's the throat grooves, as we know, used for sucking in prey. This is its mouth here. Look, you can even see its flipper pockets, which it uses to tuck its pectoral fins in to keep streamlined when it's diving so deep. This pink patch has also never been seen in this species before. It's so exciting to see these fascinating creatures right on our doorstep, and it just shows how little we know about this species. A pair of beaked whales were spotted by a team around the Canary Islands earlier this year in 2020. Good sea conditions and sharp photography skills from the team on board gave clear shots to review. And upon close examination, our marine mammal surveyors thought it was possible that these could be the rarely sighted Gervais's beaked whale. As we already know, beaked whales are very hard to identify. So we sent these pictures to a number of experts and they confirmed that these are female Gervais's beaked whale, the first time this species had ever been recorded on an orca survey. But how do we know it was a Gervais's beaked whale? Well, in particular, the dark eye patch and the shape of a melon both suggest this species and there's also distinctive banding markings on the back which is unique to female or young Gervais's beaked whales. Gervais's beaked whales are a deep diving species about which very little is known. They are closely related to other species such as Sowerby's beaked whales and True's beaked whales. And identifying these species at sea is one of the most difficult challenges in monitoring cetaceans. As a result, we have very little data about their behavior, population and distribution which makes this sighting particularly exciting. And we couldn't talk about beaked whales without mentioning this really weird but amazing creature. This is the strap-toothed beaked whale. Just like with other beaked whales, it's only the males that have teeth, and these huge tusks which curve over the upper jaw from the bottom jaw, and they grow as the whale gets older and get longer. The tusks cross over the beak and press against it. 
and that may even prevent this whale from opening their mouths more than a few centimetres. So adult males might be restricted to how big the prey they can eat are. They can only eat quite small prey just because they can't open their mouth. And check out how strange they look from the front. What a fascinating animal. But just like other cetaceans, beaked whales face a number of threats. They are known to get entangled in fishing gear. And in Japan, Baird's beaked whales are hunted. They are also prone to ingest marine litter, as we learnt in Orca Lessons 11, 12 and 13. Over 30 plastic bags were found in this Cuvier's beaked whale stomach. A floating bag looks just like their favourite food, squid. But beaked whales are particularly sensitive to noise pollution due to their deep diving habits. So do you think the ocean is a noisy place or a quiet place? The ocean is naturally a very noisy place with sounds like underwater earthquakes, rain hitting the water's surface, thunder and lightning storms and noises from marine creatures such as parrotfish crunching on coral and algae and of course whale song. Remember that sound travels five times faster through water than it does through the air but marine life has adapted to these natural noises. So let's have a listen to the ocean. Are there any non-natural sounds you can think of that can be heard in the sea? There are many man-made noises in the ocean which are not natural sounds at all. Let's listen to some examples. So as you can tell, humans add in so much more noise into the natural environment. It's very noisy. Over the last 200 years, shipping across the oceans has expanded dramatically. There have also been huge developments in offshore activities such as wind farms and oil and gas platforms. So all of this noise has been created in a very short amount of time. Noise pollution is a huge threat because it's increased so quickly and so dramatically. Animals haven't had the time to adapt to this increase in noise. As we know from lesson three, marine mammals use sound to navigate and to detect predators and prey. It's essential for communication in order to attract mates, announce locations and territories, to establish dominance and maintain the pod, keeping the pod together, and social interactions. Imagine trying to tell someone something really, really important over all of this noise. That's what it feels like for whales and dolphins. Noise pollution interferes with the ability for whales and dolphins to transmit and receive important information which they need to live. So we can divide the types of noises into two separate groups. First of all, constant noises, such as busy shipping lanes, which produce sound all the time. A noisy environment can drown out the animal's own sounds, making it harder for them to communicate, navigate and detect prey. The louder background noise means that the animals have to shout to be heard, and the animals use more energy as a result. When you use more energy, you need more food. When finding food in the noisy environment is already harder, this puts the animal's health under even more risk and this can affect its ability to carry and care for its young. In addition, a noisy environment can be very stressful for the animals too. And then there are sudden noises, such as military sonar, 
which produces loud noises infrequently and suddenly. So military sonar is a very common technique used in submarines and other underwater vessels. It uses sounds to detect objects in the water in the same way that dolphins use their echolocation. This is done by emitting sound pulses and listening for echoes. So sonar is used commonly in the military to determine the location of other vessels and submarines. Beaked whales are perhaps the most sensitive cetaceans to sound. All cetaceans suffer from the consequences of noise pollution, but beaked whales are perhaps the most sensitive to sound. Under normal circumstances, they're known to safely dive thousands of meters in search of food, using their echolocation to do so. Did you know that a series of echolocation clicks from a beaked whale can find objects as small as 50 millimeters from 100 meters away? But these loud, sudden noises can cause really severe injuries. Loud noises can cause bleeding in the ears of these animals and bleeding in their organs. Some injuries are so serious that they can be fatal. It can also cause panic. So deep diving species may change their diving pattern as a panic response to the noise. And this can cause the condition which we know as decompression sickness or the bends. Humans get this when scuba divers surface too quickly and gases mainly nitrogen, form bubbles in the blood. The same happens in whales. If they hear a loud noise, they might surface really quickly. And dead whales with the condition known as the bends have been found following high volume military exercises in the area. Sometimes the panic from a sudden loud noise can also result in the animals fleeing towards land and stranding themselves. Mass strandings have been mostly observed in highly social species of beaked whales when they're travelling together as a big pod, so they'll all get affected by these sudden, very loud noises. Also, it can cause loss of hearing. A sudden, loud noise can easily cause permanent damage to the animal's hearing and even make them deaf. Luckily, here in the UK, there are some regulations and limitations in place to help minimise the threat of noise pollution for cetaceans. Orca are out on ferry and cruise ships every month of the year, studying whales and dolphins and where their habitats are. This means we can advise the government on where important habitats are for these incredible animals and where to protect these animals from threats like noise pollution. The Royal Navy, when using sonar, increases the intensity of sonar gradually so that the animals can begin to move away from the unpleasant sound. Assessments of the impacts of different sources of noise to marine life and the identification of important cetacean habitats, breeding grounds and migration routes are done regularly, such as orcas work. Dependence on their hearing and echolocation is what makes cetaceans so vulnerable to human-made noise pollution in the sea. Just like other kinds of pollution, looking into ways of reducing it, as well as monitoring populations and assessing how they're affected by the noise, is vital to the conservation of cetaceans and all of the other wildlife in our seas. So to recap on this lesson, we know that beaked whales have a strange feeding technique. And we also know that orcas work is vital to learn more about beaked whales and to help with the conservation of these incredible species. But just like other cetaceans, beaked whales face many threats, but they are extremely at threat from noise pollution. But we must protect beaked whales for the future. Thank you so much for listening to another Orca lesson. If you want to learn more about Orca, please visit our website. It's orcaweb.org.uk. If you are able to make a donation to Orca to help support our vital conservation and education work, you can do so easily and securely on our website. Thank you so much.